Good morning. <laughs> this is not that great of a morning. We knew the anchorage would get pretty bad comes maybe four o'clock. That's like one in the morning and we are just all over the place. The waves are hitting us on the beam, so it's like super uncomfortable. So screw this, we're just gonna pull anchor and slowly sail over to <laughs> Port Lucaya. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Better if it wasn't so bouncy, but you know, you can't have everything. And it'd also be better if our power didn't shut off in the middle of the... Like we turn off the engine and then all of a sudden the power cut off. And it turned out the BMS on our lithium battery for some reason. I don't know if it disconnected or if it reset. There was no good reason for it to disconnect from what I could tell, but I gotta do a little research because I had to short the P negative and B negative, basically reactivate the BMS and then everything started working again. So I gotta look into what the heck's going on with that. We're getting close though to our anchorage. I'm just really hoping the waves aren't too big because where we're going in, um, there's reviews saying that you know, it, especially during lower tides, which we don't know what the tide's like because um, we have no internet, that's why we're going over here. Um, basically, if you catch a wave the wrong way, you might end up in the trough of the wave and you could scrape bottom. And it's, it seems like it's pretty hard bottom, it's not like sand or something. So that makes me a little nervous considering there's a decent amount of waves out here. But they're not huge, so I just don't know what, what that limit is. So I guess we'll see. Hopefully gonna get there just around daylight and we'll be able to get a good idea of what it's gonna be like going through. We were planning on going to Lukaya. We we're pretty close to getting there, but we decided uh, to turn into Freeport here because the waves are just getting built up way too much. We'd be fine for sailing other than beating up our boat. We've been smashing into the waves quite a bit when we we're heading into the wind. I mean, you could see how much we're moving probably, but basically the problem with Lukaya is it gets really shallow and we don't want to drown the boat on the going into a, a, a narrow channel basically on uh, a hard bottom. So we're gonna pay for a marina here because there's nowhere to anchor. It'll be our first marina here in Bahamas, probably our last because it's just all this COVID stuff that makes it tricky. We have to get our our um, test in five days and it's just, you know, we always said we're never on a schedule, but COVID is making us on a schedule. At least we'll get some sleep and um, continue on tomorrow probably. Well, I'm kind of glad we're coming in here because just coming in here, you know, our boat is almost tricky to control and the other channel would have been a lot more narrow. I mean, who knows, it might've been fine, but I'd rather not risk it just the way the waves are and you know if, if you get caught by a wave and you end up in the trough of the wave we're gonna be scratching bottom and it's not sand over there as I've said multiple times. just woke up for a couple of hours of sleep. I was exhausted. That was quite the night. So yesterday night uh, at 6 in the morning we pulled into the harbor of Freeport not really knowing that usually there's actually a... well it's a commercial harbor so our type of little boat isn't really the kind of boat that's supposed to come in. You've got to ask for permission and then there's also a fee to come into the harbor which Luckily they waved for us just because it was kind of stormy and we just were seeking refuge kind of thing But it would have been like a hundred and twenty dollars more or less for our size of boat. So whew. But right now we are at Bradford Marine and it's like Those little floating docks. It's not that much space for transients 
there's like a dollar a foot plus a twenty dollar flat fee for security guards water trash removal and wi-fi so 53 dollars for the night and we're getting some good rest and now we're gonna head out and try to find a btc sim card to get data to do our little health survey also do you know what the best thing is the bed is dry it's officially dry there's no water fixing our anchor locker has just made the biggest difference because yesterday we were slamming into the waves actually at one point i thought we like broke our anchor or bow roller or something because it was just like bow bow psh. So whew, it was nice having a dry bed to sleep in. Last year crossing into the Bahamas, we realized that our floor was covered in water. Not all of it, but it was starting to have some water because we had opened up a section of the anchor locker trying to remove some of the rotten wood. So water was filling into the boat under our bed and into our bed. So we had quite a few gallons of water. And we couldn't really fix it while we were in the Bahamas because we didn't really have any epoxy. But now this is all good. Well, an hour and a half walk in the middle of nowhere to Freeport, we actually got our BTC SIM card. Yes! So now we can complete our daily health survey and do the <laughs> <laughs> and do the videos. So that's super. And when you buy your SIM card, they give you like three gigs of data with it for seven days. And then after that, we can just pop it, top it up online or over the phone. So that's what we're gonna do. Sweet, let's go. Oh, we're walking the 7.5 kilometers back to Grand Bahama Marine. Or no, something marine. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> so it was three and a half miles, or sorry, four and a half miles there and four and a half back, right? No, I thought it was seven and a half there and seven and a half kilometers. back. Kilometers. Yeah. Oh, so miles. miles. <laughs> tired. Way too tired. I need to go home. <laughs> We're getting there. For all the ones that said our Canadian flag was a disgrace, we have a new one. <laughs> so, what's the game plan today? Getting off the dock and heading to... Uh, what's the name of the place? Port Lucaya. Port Lucaya. Drop an anchor, hopefully. There's not a whole lot of room for boats, but I don't think there'll be too many boats there. And hopefully doing our test on Friday. Otherwise, we're gonna have to wait till Monday and we'll likely be stuck there for over a week because the weather is not looking good. So if we have to wait till Monday to do it, which will be like a seven day before our test and we're supposed to do it after five days, then I'm tempted to just leave and go somewhere else to do the test. Otherwise, we're gonna be stuck in a place where there's almost nothing to do. No fishing, no, you know, like it's, it's not a good place to hang out, let's say, and it's not where I want to be. The only reason why we're going there is for the test. So fingers crossed that we can do it on Friday so then we can use the nice weather Friday afternoon and Saturday to get where we want to go and actually hang out somewhere that will be a little nicer. Standing by, we just called the port master or whatnot, uh, which we didn't realize we were meant to call on the way in. Luckily, there was no traffic. It was at like, you know, four in the morning when we came in or five in the morning. But uh, we just called him just to verify because it sounds like there's a lot more traffic going on right now. And he just told us to stand by by the entrance of the marina. So we're just gonna wait until he calls us. He's supposed to call us back in a few moments and let us know uh, when we can leave. So yeah, I guess it's just a busy port and I mean, we're not the priority by any means. So we just have to wait for the other barges and everything else not to be in our way. 
or uh, for us not to be in their way, I should say. So we're just kind of cruising slowly here. We're gonna hang out at the entrance of this uh, cut that the marina goes to. We are ready to proceed. We had to wait about almost a half hour, but it's because there was a barge and a couple other boats that needed to go out first, which I totally understand. We are and I'm just grateful that they made room for us. channel motion is a little bit better now but i've realized that uh, being pregnant i've got a weaker stomach than i used to so i'm staring at the horizon getting well i really like our boat right now i don't know if it's the modifications we did to the keel or our fancy new bottom paint that's all smooth comparing to the last two seasons of sailing or well, one season anyway. Um, but we're cruising so much faster. Like downwind sailing, we're sailing at six knots with you know the sail not even trimmed perfectly. And it just seems so much easier to carry our speed. So I'm very happy with our, our current setup right now. I'd really love to know if it was the, just the bottom paint or if it was the uh, smoothing out the keel, keel to hull joint. It's been a beautiful downwind sail, we kind of cut around the corner and so now we have no waves it's perfect and we're just ripping we're about to enter the channel and get into some anchoring pulled out less sail just so we cruise through the shallow bit here at a slower speed because we we're cruising at five six knots and we're seeing really low depths, you know, between six to seven feet. So I just want to make sure we don't hit something. If we do hit something, it's going to be at a slower speed. I don't know if we would make it out of here at low tide. No, well, we, wouldn't, we definitely wouldn't have made it in here with the waves the other night. So it was definitely a good call to uh, grab Freeport entrance. We found a sheltered anchorage in the canals at Port Lucaya. There are some spots where a few sailboats can comfortably anchor. I'll give it more gas. Doesn't look like we're moving much. It was time to go check out the town and the marketplace. from uh, Dory and the Hurricane. We thought we could park our dinghy at the marketplace, but everything's closed. Well, we got the dinghy down there. We're still smashing. Oh, it's How's the marketplace? It's a complete ghost town other than the select few bars. I mean, I understand there's not a whole lot of tourism right now, but this is crazy. It really, really puts a damper on the whole area, unfortunately, because it looks like it'd be a really cool area when things are actually open. Yeah. 
So cruising is all about constantly changing your plans. Even when you really want to do something, the weather has other ideas and you don't get to do what you had planned. And that's fine, but it's just frustrating sometimes. And with this virus, it makes it even harder because the only days that we would have had for good travel to go where we want to go, which is the Abacos, are taken up by doing tests. Normally the wind kind of clocks around. This time it doesn't seem to be doing that because it's going from the north, then back to east, then back to north again, and then east for like a week straight. So that doesn't work well because we need to go basically east because we're just on the western side of the Bahamas, which is um, all fine. We're just going to readjust our plans. So. I don't think we're, unless we want to wait here until the wind potentially changes at one point. That's the other thing is that the weather is, I mean, every time we reload our app here, Windy, it's changed. You know, I looked at it this morning. I was like, oh, sweet, look, we are going here. That's why I say we are constantly changing our plans because the weather is constantly changing. So basically, right now we're getting a bit of north wind. It's going to be ending... Well, we'll still have tomorrow with Northwind, which would have been okay uh, for getting up and around. I mean, it would have been tricky to get around West End over at the end here. But anyway, it doesn't matter. We can't go tomorrow because we got to do our COVID test tomorrow, which we're fingers crossed that we can actually do it tomorrow. Um, but then it's switching out of the east, and it's just staying out of the east for... Actually, no, we get some north for a little while again, and then mostly east. Lots and lots and lots of east. So anyway, so we're here. Really the only option I think is to get over to the berries or something else down here. The berries is the closest, it's about 60 nautical miles from where we are roughly. So I think that's going to be the plan provided we can do our COVID test on Friday here. Then sometime on Saturday leave and head to the berries. Again, this could change tomorrow because this will likely be changed tomorrow. So we'll see what happens, but we got to try to find some protection before uh, this Sunday night to Monday um, thing kind of happens because it's not going to be the nicest. As I said, we're always changing our plan and we're going to continue to do so. So just because we say we're going somewhere, don't get too excited. Just like I keep trying to tell myself not to get too excited about certain things because plans change faster than I can change my underwear. So now we're just gonna enjoy the water, go for a little swim, maybe snorkel. Because today we can't we can't really do our COVID test earlier, so we're gonna have to do it tomorrow. So enjoy life right now. How is the snorkeling? Uh, pretty boring. It was nice to get in the water, but there's just seagrass everywhere, there's no no reef. That's okay. Smells good. I know, it's very tempting. It's a really cool, cool area. It's a shame everything's closed, other than the odd, uh, you know, place to get food or something. There's a little spot called Jack Sparrow's over here. It's open for like fish and chips and stuff. There's actually a really cool little bra uh, bar right behind it. I mean, it's not open, but it's cool because it's got this massive tree growing in the middle of it. It's kind of like the centerpiece to the bar. Well, we made it to Bonaventure Labs. We're gonna do our five-day COVID test. 
finally it's Saturday and apparently they're open which is really nice because our five day fell on a Saturday and lots of places are closed over the weekend but it's gonna be nice to get that done out of the way so that now we can plan according to weather the testing mm -hmm. so let's go do this right over there Oh, oh, oh. This is gonna be so good. It smells amazing. Open sesame. Oh, oh wow. wow. So we have jerk chicken, um, fish fingers, mac and cheese, potato salad, and rice and beans. All that huge wow. plate for like $15. How excited are you? Mm. Oh man, just the rice is delicious. I can't wait to try the rest. This is just so good. Every bite is like an explosion of flavors. So rice and beans are quite traditional of the Bahamas and the mac and cheese as well. And it's just amazing. If you're ever in Port Lucaya, Freeport area, go to Pepper Spot. It's delicious and worth the money. And it's on the way to the COVID test. Yeah. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Take it easy. Yeah, okay. Bye. All right. Bye now. <laughs> well, we just saved up a bunch of time of walking. We just got on the public bus that stops all over the place. It's those little like blue minivans, and it's like a dollar twenty-five a person. Super. Well, this is an exciting moment in our Bahamas travel. It is day five and we get our results from the CPR <laughs> and we get our results from the COVID test and we're both negative so we are officially free to travel around the Bahamas we only have to complete nine more days of health survey and that's it <laughs> we got a leak here the glue is starting to come undone I peeled back a bunch of it to expose all the dirty, cruddy areas. So I'm going to clean this up the best I can and then slap a bunch of 42 or 5200, whatever we have, and hopefully get it sealed again because that's no good. Whereas this side we already did, holding up pretty good. There's a little bit coming off, but we don't have a leak here yet, so we'll seal this up a little bit. The rest of it's pretty good. There's a lot more delaminated stuff than I thought for the amount of water that was coming in. So I just cleaned it up a bit with a scrubby. And now I'm sanding it down with some 80 grit. Then we'll let it dry out real nice. And then slap some 5200. I think we have a little yeah, more. We still have some. So we use 5200 because it holds a little better than 4200. And then I want this to stay forever. So, so I don't care if it's impossible to get off afterwards. Lots of 5200. With the strong northerly winds coming on Sunday, we were so happy to be in a very protected anchorage. And we even had a few friends on the two other sailboats. Maple syrup is precious and so good. Are you excited? Oh, I'm super excited. Might be a little bit weird that we're having pancakes for supper, <laughs> but we were gonna have it for lunch. But then we found that awesome little restaurant, so we didn't eat our pancakes for lunch. Why <laughs> <laughs> don't you grab the bottle while you're at it? Good. Maybe it's not hot enough yet. Bye!
pancakes. Who wants pancakes? Pancakes and movies. And it's your mom's recipe. Mm -mm, good. During the storm, we have Corey playing with solar settings. Probably not the best time to be doing it, but <clears throat> we're editing with multiple laptops and for some reason the solar was being a little bit finicky and not giving us what we should be getting. So I'm just playing around with it. Obviously we're not getting very much solar because it's pouring rain and cloudy, but uh, we are getting like 0.1 amp, which and it was telling me it was float charging, which it shouldn't be because the batteries are down around 73%. So I'm just playing around with the settings, trying to figure out what was going on. Alex is editing away. What's our new lithium battery? <laughs> and we've upgraded our editing station. Look at all this massiveness. We got two screens that takes up the whole table, but it's so convenient. And the editing computer is there, slash what used to be a gaming computer. But I love the double screens. It was a rainy old day this afternoon. I'm loving our setup. It's so much, so much better. Like we can be so much more efficient and I have to worry. Like today we keep having sun and then pouring rain and sun and pouring rain. And usually when, it, when it's a day like this, it'd be like perfect for editing because you can't really go do anything outside, especially with the wind gusting to like 35 plus knots. But because we have those batteries, now we can actually do some editing and take advantage of the days that you can't really go do much. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. When you think you have the boat clean, this is what happens. Stuff everywhere. And the Cory and the Corbers is asking me for tools. Thanks. What you up to? I'm trying to tighten up the rudder stuffing box because our bilge keeps going on about every half hour or so. So hoping to tighten it up and solve that problem because I'm pretty sure this is the only spot the water's coming in. You so we have some really fr wide. friends on board. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Hi, hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Andy. It's been awesome hanging out with you guys. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's kind of funny. We actually met them in West Palm Beach yeah. and they crossed the day before us to the Bahamas and then we've been like bouncing on and off with them for the last five days, six days. 